So good to see so many of you here. Hello, everybody, and happy Thursday. We're so glad you're here. First, I want to introduce Juan and Carla, who will be providing live Spanish interpretation for today's information session. As they move to a dedicated channel in just a moment, please click on the globe icon if you prefer to listen in Spanish today. Es un placer verlos a todos aquí. Eh, le quiero dar la bienvenida a Carla y a Juan, que son los intérpretes de este día. Eh, hay interpretación disponible en español. Favor de hacer un clic en el icono del globo abajo de su pantalla y seleccionar Spanish para cambiar su audio. Gracias. Thank you, Carla and Juan. We also want to let you know that we're recording today's session and you'll receive an email with video from today by next week. Alongside our presentation, our team will be participating in the chat throughout the hour and we'll reserve time for Q&A. So please send us your questions. Thanks for joining us today for this info session about Fuel for 50, an exciting new Robinhood program. We're thrilled with today's turnout. My name is David Hernandez, and I'm an associate here at Robinhood. Let's go ahead and dive in. Kelly, can you please walk us through today's agenda? Absolutely. Thanks, David. Hi, everyone. My name is Kelly Escobar. So good to see some names that I recognize in the uh, participants list. So hi. Welcome, everybody. Uh, I'm a senior program officer here at Robinhood, and I'm going to tell you our game plan for today. First, we want to introduce Robinhood, the fund for early learning at Robinhood, which we affectionately call FUEL, and the individual team members behind the FUEL for 50 challenge. We'll then provide an overview of the FUEL for 50 program, including why we've created this initiative and how it differs from other Robinhood funding opportunities. Then we'll review details of both the application and the selection processes. And finally, we'll close out with some dedicated time for us to answer any questions you might have about Fuel for 50. So Kelvin, over to you, take it away. Thank you so much, Kelly. Allow me to add my welcome. Today is such a dream come true for me. And I'm honored that you've taken the time to join today's info session. My name is Kelvin Chan, and I'm the Managing Director of the Early Childhood Portfolio at our foundation. For those of you who are new to Robinhood, we're a foundation headquartered near Union Square in Manhattan. We were founded in 1988 to lift New York City families out of poverty, and we currently partner with around 250 nonprofit organizations across all five boroughs. And FUEL, the Fund for Early Learning, is a program within Robinhood that is focused on supporting our youngest New Yorkers, children ages zero to three, and pregnant women and the other adults in children's lives. So FUEL's mission is to transform New York into an early learning metropolis where every child can have an equitable chance at a bright future. And learning from research about how children's brains develop and how we can best support their families and caregivers, we've partnered with many of New York's larger systems, city and state agencies, libraries, hospitals, and shelter systems, on programs to help support the 100,000 plus infants and toddlers living in poverty in New York City. But we have much more to do and that local communities and neighborhood organizations are leading much of the work to support young children and strengthen the whole family. I mentioned that today is really a dream come true and I'd like to share more about that. In March of 2020, we were poised to launch However, the COVID-19 pandemic effectively shut it and most everything else in the world down. Within the pandemic, we got to see the disturbing and inequitable impact of COVID-19 on Black, Brown, and Indigenous populations. So as we enter the particular phase of the pandemic that we are in today, and hopefully this is the tail end of it, I'm excited to imagine with you what it means to transform New York City into an early learning metropolis. And Robinhood wants to hear from you about what it takes to achieve this vision. And again, thank you for being here with us today. And I'll pass it back to David. Thanks so much, Kelvin. Feel for 50 has been designed and developed by a big and passionate team now for over more than two years. While we don't have time today for everyone to introduce themselves, I just wanna quickly recognize the individuals behind this program. From the Robinhood side, You've already heard from Kelvin and Kelly, and you'll get a, hands, a chance to hear from Adina and Ayana shortly. Other key staff, Courtney Ridgway, Alexandra Kay, and Deb Sakalarios were essential too. 
and two important collaborators have helped us along the way. Social Strategy Associates has helped to design the initiative and spearheads end-to-end -end implementation, while Reciprocal supports marketing and communications. We're grateful to both of these teams, and don't be surprised if you see any of their names in your inbox. Kelly, I'll pass it back to you to introduce Fuel for 50. Thanks so much, David. Fuel for 50 is a new program to strengthen early childhood learning and development with awards for 50 programs that support parents and caregivers of New York City kids ages zero to three years. We created Fuel for 50 to recognize and reward the diversity of community organizations that are standing up for parents and caregivers of young children in our city. And when we say diversity of organizations, we mean it. We're not just looking for the largest or longest established organizations. And we're not just looking for organizations with missions in child development. We strongly believe that all organizations can support children. If an adult who interacts with a young child on a daily basis walks through your door or relies on you for any support, we want to hear from you. Overall, Feel for 50 will provide $10 million in total earmark support over three years. And we'll talk more about that implementation in just a few minutes. But what makes Fuel for 50 different from the Fund for Early Learning and other Robin Hood grant making? So there are a few key differences here that we'd like to address. First, that Fuel for 50 has a targeted focus on parents and caregivers. And although Fuel does have uh, support for caregivers in the portfolio, Fuel for 50 will be more open to concepts that might reimagine what traditional child-centric definitions of caregiver support might look like. There will also be no strings attached funding. That means that there will be a request for applications, which itself is new for Robinhood, and awardees will receive $25,000 to do whatever they so please with. No grant contracts, no grant goals, no restrictions on whether that money has to be used for program or for general expenses. This is a huge leap from what Robinhood has traditionally done. Awardees will also have access to optional workshops and support. And these workshops will offer a diverse mix of organizational support and professional development, as well as individualized one-on-one -on -one support from a range of Robin Hood staff and other experts. And one of the most exciting facets of Fuel for 50 is how we emphasize inclusiveness of nonprofits beyond the field of child development. That is, we want to inspire organizations such as faith-based organizations, immigration organizations, food pantries, and other organizations to think of themselves as impacting children who may never have thought of themselves in this way because they don't offer, say, educational supports, but do indeed influence children's everyday lives by supporting their caregivers and parents in a variety of ways. This will be a departure from Robin Hood's traditional grant making, but one we think is gonna open the doors to so many opportunities to make children and families a true priority across New York City and really make Robin Hood a much more approachable and inclusive organization as a whole. And now I'd like to turn over the mic to my colleague, Adina. Thanks so much, Kelly. So at a high level, Fuel for 50 will provide a total of $10 million in earmark support over the course of three phases. Currently, we are holding an open call for applications that will last from August 24th through November 19th, 2021. Then the first stage um, will begin February 2022, focused on selection and support. From our open application process, 50 organizations will be selected to receive $25,000 each, as well as access to workshops and support. Then phase two will begin November 2022, focused on testing for impact. 10 organizations will be selected from the original 50 and will receive $250,000 each and receive program development and consulting. Phase three will begin May, 2023, focus on funding for scale. Three organizations will be selected from the 10 from phase two and will receive $1 million and assistance with impact testing. We are so excited to work closely with all of the Fuel for 50 awardees and provide support for those that elect to apply for each phase of the prize. All phases of the challenge start with the same application and we've worked to make the process as simple as possible. Um, so by now we hope you're excited to apply for Fuel for 50. As you may have already seen, our application is all online and can be found easily at our website. 
you can start your application right now by visiting fuelfor50.org and clicking on apply now. When you click that button, you'll be taken to a portal where you can quickly register, complete a simple four question eligibility quiz and fill out your application. You can stop and save your progress as you're filling out the application. You don't need to finish it all in one sitting. And if it's helpful for you and your organization to receive a complete list of application questions prior to starting this process, please don't hesitate to email hello at fuelfor50.org and we'll get back to you ASAP. We can only accept applications submitted online through the grants management portal. We cannot process paper applications or applications emailed to us. And please mark your calendars. The Fuel for 50 application deadline is November 19th at 11.59 Eastern. And now I'll ask my colleague Ayana to review Fuel for 50's eligibility requirements. Thanks, Adina. Now let's pivot to eligibility requirements. In designing Fuel for 50, as you may have heard from Kelly, we aim to be as inclusive as possible. There are just three simple eligibility requirements. First, you must be supporting adults or caregivers of children aged zero to three. That said, your organization does not need to be focused on early childhood to be eligible for Fuel for 50. It's our hope that immigration organizations, mutual aid groups, housing advocates, and many more will reflect on the important role they play in supporting caregivers of young children and participate in this program. Two, second, you must be serving or aspire to serve a New York City community impacted by poverty. We're defining community broadly here. And thirdly, primary applicants must be 501c3 nonprofit organizations. That said, other types of organizations can absolutely be secondary applicants if the application is submitted in partnership with a nonprofit organization. Beyond those simple requirements, we're excited to learn about the new and established programs that work best in your community. We know that we can make a huge difference in children's lives by strengthening learning and, socio and social emotional skills, for example, conducting story time sessions or offering substance abuse treatment and prevention programs for adults, building nurturing relationships, for example, offering programs that promote responsive parenting or supporting survivors of domestic violence to create healthy and stable environments, reducing sources of stress, for example, providing caregivers with access to mental health services or connecting adults to safety net resources such as WIC and SNAP. But there are no specific approaches or models for impact required as part of Fuel for 50. We're excited to learn about new strategies or ideas that your organization uses to support families in your community. And that takes us to the selection process. You can find a post on the Fuel for 50 website that speaks to our team's thinking when putting together a process intended to, both trans, to be both transparent and democratic. One of my colleagues will put a link to the blog post in the chat, but now I'm going to talk you through details of our selection process. Once the application portal is closed on November 19th, every application will be reviewed by a staff member to ensure it meets the eligibility criteria reviewed on the previous slide. Supporting adults or caregivers in the lives of children zero to three, New York focused and serving community impacted by poverty. Then in step two, every eligible application will be read again by a staff member who will score the submission using a scoring matrix that we'll look uh, at together in a few minutes. Based on those scores, a subset of applications will advance to review by a selection committee. In step three, two different selection committee members will read advancing applications and again score them using the same evaluation matrix used by Robinhood staff. Then these two selection committee members will hop on an hour an hour long facilitated call to come to consensus on the top ideas in the shared docket. Finally, as part of our commitment to diversity in all of its forms, the fuel team will conduct one last review of selection committee's recommendations to ensure the 50 awardees are representative of New York City including where they're located, community served, and the diversity of program leadership staff. I'll now pass it, the mic back to Kelly to focus in on the selection criteria that will be used both by Robin Hood staff and the selection committee. Thank you, Ayana. And I wanna pause for just one minute. I'm so excited to see all of these questions coming in the chat. Uh, and I want to give our uh, participants a moment to 
finish their questions before we move on. I know we're throwing a lot of information at you. So give it one minute and then I'll talk about the selection criteria. Okay, great. So all Fuel for 50 applications will be evaluated on, on the same set of equally weighted selection criteria. Our team and committee members will be given a scorecard and asked to rate applications on a scale of one to five for four categories. Next slide, please. Oh, one back one, thank you. First, compelling. Does the organization present a compelling plan or vision for strengthening core skills, building nurturing relationships, reducing sources of stress, or otherwise supporting parents or caregivers of ch children ages three and under? Impactful. How confident are you that this program will positively impact families with young children or caregivers or other important adults in the lives of young children? Community informed. Does the organization demonstrate relationships with the communities they hope they serve? Have those relationships and community needs informed the program's design? Realistic. Do the potential reach and objectives for this program seem achievable or executable? Finally, we'll ask for an overall assessment, which will state, reflecting on the overall submission, how excited are you about the possibility of this organization being named an awardee of Fuel for 50? And here is a list of our wonderful selection committee members. Our committee is a collection of parents and subject matter experts who have shared, who have a shared passion for early childhood development. And we are grateful to absolutely each and every one of them. You can learn more about each of our selection committee members and see their smiling faces by visiting fuelfor50.org and clicking on how it works and then selection committee. David, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Kelly. As we near the end of the presentation portion of today's information session, we want to review the Fuel for 50 timeline over the next six months or so. So, we launched Fuel for 50 and opened applications a little over eight weeks ago on August 24th. All applications for Fuel for 50 are due three weeks from tomorrow, by Friday, November 19th at 11.59 Eastern Time. Robinhood will complete our eligibility screening and review throughout the month of December. Our selection committee will start the review in mid-January, and finally, we'll be able to notify and announce our 50 awardees by next March. That concludes our overview, and we want to save as much time as we can for Q&A. But first, I want to thank you all for joining us and for your time and participation today. We can't wait to see your applications. Thank you also to our wonderful translators, Juan and Carla, for their support during the session. Please go ahead and continue to submit your questions if you have them, but first some quick reminders. We have all of the information that we covered today and more on our website. Please check out the news section for some articles about relevant projects, research, and other background. As we've said before, email us at any time at hello at fuelfor50.org or sign up for a 15 minute office hour session every Friday from 12 to one. These sessions offer a unique opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a member of our team about any questions you may have about Fuel for 50. You can sign up right now at fuelfor50.org forward slash get dash help. And finally, a reminder that you'll get an email with a link to today's recording and some other resources by next week, which we welcome you to share with whoever wasn't able to make it today from your organization. Well, We've covered a lot of ground today. We're pleased to now transition to answering questions you have for us. Feel free to continue to drop questions into the chat and we'll aim to get to as many as we can in the time that we have remaining together. Just looking at the questions that we have now, I see one that reads, my organization does not focus on early childhood development. Can I apply? 
Kelly, do you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. So your organization does not need to be focused squarely on early childhood learning or development in order to apply. In fact, we're actually really excited to hear about all the different types of nonprofit organizations that work with important adults in the lives of children ages zero to three, including organizations that have never considered applying for funding focused on early childhood. For example, we know that there are organizations doing applicable work in the fields of immigration or criminal justice reform, housing, food security, and more. So as long as you're supporting parents or caregivers of young children, then we want to hear from you. And I do also want to secondarily address in that comment that I see in the chat as well, that we don't necessarily only mean parents and caregivers specifically. We mean any important adults in a child's life during those first three years of life. So we are happy to hear from organizations working with teachers, with child care providers, and other uh, important caregivers. Thanks, David. Thanks, Kelly. Um, another question reads, can I submit my application in Spanish? Ayana, can you take that one? Yeah, of course. The application portal is only available in English. If you would like to discuss submitting your proposal in Spanish, please reach out to the FUEL team for a copy of the application in Spanish and to discuss the process. Thanks. Um, I, I see a question about applying while not being a 501c3 organization. Adina, can you take that one? Of course. Um, so if you're not a 501c3 organization, you can apply in one of two ways. If you have a fiscal sponsor, or in partnership with a 501c3 organization. In this case, please note that you will need to list either that partner organization or your fiscal sponsor as the primary applicant to the Fuel for 50, as the primary applicant must be the 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, because your 501c3 nonprofit organization must be the primary applicant, the legal name of your organization, the I E I N slash tax ID and all other questions related to the organization should be associated with the fiscal sponsor uh, or the 501c3. So hopefully that clears up um, some of those questions. Really important point, thank you. Um, my program does not receive fuel funding, but our parent organization does. Am I still not eligible to apply? Kelvin, what do you think? Happy to answer. So current fuel grantees may not apply to Fuel for 50 as a primary applicant, but they, but current fuel grantees may apply in partnership with an eligible primary applicant. And simply put, you may apply, you may not apply if your organization receives fuel funding, whether that is through um, your specific program or the organization as a whole. However, you may explore partnering with another organization should you still wish to apply. That being said, we do have very few exceptions for this eligibility for institutions with distant, uh, with distinct departments such as universities or hospitals. Yeah, and, and I'll just add the, the, um, the prohibition on, on fuel grantees is just specifically for the Fund for Early Learning. Um, if you are a Robinhood partner, I saw that question in the chat, um, if you've received Robinhood funding from other sources of uh, grant dollars, you are eligible to apply. Um, I see a question here. Can we apply with more than one partner? Um, and then added to that, do partner organizations need to be 501c3 organizations? Um, so yes, we you can apply with more than one partner. Partnerships are encouraged. Um, but the partnership will rely on one individual or organization who will be submitting on behalf of the partnership. That organization is the one that needs to be a 501c3 and that needs to meet all of the eligibility requirements. So um, as Kelly was saying, a fuel partner can apply, but they need to apply in partnership with you know, a partner that, that meets all of the eligibility requirements. Um, are nutrition and anti-hunger organizations allowed to apply? Kelly, I think you touched on this a little bit, but do you want to clarify? Yeah, absolutely. So assuming that you meet all other eligibility criteria, we are absolutely excited to hear about all these types of nonprofits that support families overall and caregivers in New York City. Great. Um, I see someone asking, when you say general or program support, 
does this mean the funding could go towards something other than um, the child development program uh, we're talking about? Uh, when, we say, when we say no strings attached funding and general operating support, we really do mean it. Um, if your application is selected as one of the 50, um, those dollars are yours and you decide what to do with them. Uh, we do assume that the funding will support the work that you applied on behalf of, and we hope that you'll use the funding to build towards a round two application, which again is $250,000 in funding as opposed to round one, which is $25,000. Um, and, and further in round three, where there's up to a million dollars um, to be awarded to up to three organizations. Um, so we would hope they use it to, for the program, but it is general operating and, and um, your discretion for, for what to do with those dollars. Um, there's a question here about expanding on the cell phone video request. Adina, do you mind taking that one? Sure. So yes, there is an option to include a one minute video explaining your Fuel for 50 program. We do not expect it to be of professional quality. It's just an opportunity to hear from you directly about how your organization will help support the parents or caregivers of young children in your community. We'd prefer a new vi video made on your smartphone over a professional video your organization made for another purpose and we'll not judge these on the production quality. Thanks for that. I'll take a quick one. Uh, does the nonprofit have to have an annual budget of a certain amount? No, uh, it's not taken into consideration. No requirements. We welcome you to apply regardless. Um, there's another one here. Can organizations from communities that may not be aware of Robin Hood also stand a chance at being included? Ayana, what do you think? Absolutely. Fuel hopes to learn from organizations and individuals that may not have previously been aware of Robin Hood. We really encourage you to apply. Great. Um, let me read through here. Are there minimum requirements on how many parents or caregivers your organization must support in order to be included, either numbers or percent of those served? Kelvin, what do you think? No, there is no minimum requirement for how many parents or caregivers your organization must support. That being said, our selection committee will have the final discretion um, to determine your score and impact based on an evaluation matrix. Um, and we have that available um, in our website. Yeah, there was a there was a question here that I touched on a little bit earlier about um, are the 50 applicants in round one the only ones considered in round two? Yes. So that is part of the award in round one is that only round one winners will be eligible to apply for round two, which again is an order of magnitude greater in funding with the $250,000 on the line. And then only awardees in round two, those 10 awardees will be eligible to apply for round three where um, there's a million dollars in funding available. Um, let's see. It's a question here. Are you seeking to focus support on direct service or will Fuel for 50 also consider early childhood systems level innovations? Kelly, what do you think? Yeah, great question. So we're open to any and all ideas, whether it's longstanding or new and innovative. Um, it could be direct service innovation. It could be longstanding attempts at systems level innovation. We're really open to hearing anything. Um, I know a, a similar questions were asked, especially in how many parents are currently supported. Um, again, we're really looking to hear from the voices of the community in this, in this program. So we are open to getting applications from programs that have yet to start, programs that are still in the conception phase, programs that have just started, but might need a little bit more support to ramp up or get a little bit more enrollment um, or programs that have been happening for quite a long time and we haven't, uh, we haven't had a partnership with them yet. So please, as long as you meet the eligibility criteria, we'd love to hear what you have to offer. Great. Um... Let's see. So um, I see a question here about impact and how we're we're demonstrating impact. Um, Kelvin, do you want to take that one? C 
Sorry, I'm having trouble with my computer at the moment. It's freezing. Oh yeah, no worries. I, I can take yeah. that one. So, okay. so basically um, all applications will be evaluated through the scorecard, which we can send out in the email that we send as a follow-up to, to this webinar. Um, the scorecard definition that we have is for, for evaluators to fill out. It reads, how confident are you that this program will positively impact families with young children or caregivers or other important adults in the lives of young children? That being said, our selection committee is comprised of experts and community members that are familiar with what work has real impact on these communities and the ultimate determinant of the finding impact will be based on their collective and expert review. Thanks for that question. Um, I see here. I to, oh, sorry, go ahead, Kelly. I was going to say, I just want to bring up again that if you are an existing Robin Hood partner, you are eligible to apply. Um, it could be through relief, through power fund, through regular Robin Hood. Um, you are eligible. The only restrictions we have is that the primary applicant cannot be a fuel partner, which is what uh, is being projected on the screen right now. However, fuel partners can apply with other 501c3s who are not fuel partners, and those have to be the primary applicants. And we do have some exceptions on applications of fuel partners um, when it comes to some hospital and university organizations, given the differences in departments and schools and, and labs and such. So uh, we're happy to answer that separately as well, um, if need be. Another quick one I see here, our organization is a sister organization to one that has received a fuel grant, though we are an independent 501c3. Would that disqualify us or reduce the attractiveness of, of our application? No, it would not disqualify you and it would not be considered um, for the award. It's only the, the criteria on the evaluation scorecard. All right, see a question here. Are there additional applications for phases two and three? Ayana, do you want to take that one? No, there are not. The initial application is for phase one. And then from phase one, we will pick folks from fa for phase two and phase three. So everyone from phase two and phase three will be coming out of the phase one applications. Yeah, and then after phase one, um, those applications will become available at a, at a later point. But yes, only phase one ap applicants are eligible and then um, phase two and phase three applications will be developed and, and sent out um, over the next few months. Thanks for the question. Um, there's a question here about, uh, is all of the money no strings attached or will we need to make reports in phase two and phase three? The, the $25,000 award is only for phase one um, and for that specific award, it is no strings attached, no reporting requirements. After you've been chosen as an awardee, um, that's sort of like the end of your obligations to, to Robinhood, though, of course, we will be offering a, a suite of workshops to help um, you and your organization and, and the program that you're developing. And we, we hope that you'll, you'll stick around for that. But um, yes, no strings attached for that, for that first phase. I see an interesting question here about whether this application process is something that we're testing for other programs at Robinhood. Um, and I don't want to speak for the whole organization, although I do want to say that we have had some other initiatives uh, where there is a very easy to access uh, short application process involved. Um, so it may be something that Robinhood may do in the future, but in the moment we are just doing this for our challenge. I also recall that there was a question about whether ideas need to be new. I, I wanna emphasize this point that we're looking for what you're doing, whether it be new or ongoing, we wanna hear from you. So no, nothing needs to be brand new or not have 
ever been implemented before in order for us to consider it um, for Fuel for 50. So please let us know what you're doing. May it be new or something that is ongoing. There was another request to see if we could um, re-review the selection criteria. Do you think we could pull that up? Great. So we are projecting again here what the selection criteria will be. And again, it will be scored um, in these four areas as well, not projected here, but as well as an overall um, grade, if you will, based on these four criteria and excitement for the project as a whole. So our selection committee you will have two different selection committee members independently reviewing it and then coming together to discuss the application based on these criteria. Great. See another question here from someone that reads, does the sponsor org or fiscal sponsor need to be New York City based? We are a collective and have a Canadian based org who would possibly sponsor us. Um, the organization does not need to be New York City based as long as the program itself is serving a New York City community impacted by poverty. Um, the like headquarters or legal location of, of the organization um, doesn't matter. There's also a question about um, awaiting 501c3 status. Um, so unfortunately for this, this specific challenge, you will need to have that IRS paperwork completed and submitted in order to be eligible. So if you're an organization who is awaiting that 501c3 status, we do encourage you to apply in partnership with or with a fiscal sponsor if you can have one and have them be the primary applicant, even though you'd be your program that you would be submitting um, as the idea. I see Jennifer is asking a question about serving students three to five. Unfortunately, Fuel for 50 is specifically for um, serving parents and caregivers of zero to three-year-olds. Um, so it doesn't sound like it, though, honestly, th there might be a, a way in which, you know, you're uh, engaging with parents or caregivers of, of young children without maybe even knowing it. So I don't want to, like, on, on the outset, just say that it's it's not eligible, but at least that particular part of serving uh, the three to five year olds doesn't uh, align with, with Fuel for 50. Thanks for the question. That's right, David. And just to add again, um, if this is potentially an avenue that your organization is exploring on how you might expand on serving a, a population of caregivers or parents that have younger children, or for instance, those students with younger siblings and their families, and you have an idea you might want to submit, we are open to hearing ideas as well. See a question here, if chosen for phase two, can you add a partner organization for phase two? Um, so only round one awardees are eligible for rounds two to apply. Of course, the work itself can be in partnership with whoever you'd like, but the applying organization and the eventual awardee will be um, that round one organization. That's right. And through the awarding, um, I'm sorry, through the uh, phasing of the project, there are different elements emphasized to the application. So initially is really hearing about what's out there or what could be out there. And then the second phase, mostly about refining the programming uh, and really honing down the outcomes and the third phase on scaling. So if in partnership, you know, that's your avenue for potentially scaling or piloting the program, then that that works as well. I see something, a, would a program that includes a number of elements approaching the goal from different angles be compelling? Or do you prefer to fund something more focused? I think we've intentionally not been prescriptive with a lot of you know, what we want to see in applicants other than the scorecard that we've posted, which is again, what our, what our selection committee will be evaluating applications on. We're not putting a weight on on any of these factors, including you know how new an organization is or experienced. We're 
sort of creating a, a level playing field um, and only using those uh, those criteria on the scorecard. So um, no preference here on you know tackling something from different angles or, or being a little bit more narrow in the scope. Um, we leave that up to you and, and can't wait to read the application. I see that Rex answered the question from Tiffany about having six different sites. If there's one concept or idea, I, we would recommend just submitting one application. If there are different concepts that you think are needed at these different sites, then I think that could be an opportunity for multiple applications. But if it's kind of one idea that you want to scale across the, the different sites, I would recommend one. There's also a question here from Patricia Jones. Uh, will phase one repeat in 2022 if not selected this year and we could reapply? So this will be a one-time challenge. We only have the one phase one. Um, so unfortunately, this will be the only application time for those 50 to get those 50 awardees. And I'm not sure if we already covered this question, but it, um, it's the question related to if your program does not serve children, but supports parents, would that program include, would that include programs that include both the parent and caregiver and the child? So if I'm gonna read this question correctly, I, I think the answer to that is that, yes, we know that supporting parents is supporting children, we are open to all types of orgs in the space supporting parents, but it's emphasis on the support of parents and caregivers. So, so long as those adults are spending a significant amount of time interacting or supporting the growth of zero to threes, we're all for it. And to that extent, we're also open to programs that are um, uh, focused on pregnant women as well. And so this is a very important emphasis here that the zero is also inclusive of the developing fetus. Uh, Joanna, um, I see you're having issues with creating the account. Please send us an email at hello at feelfor50.org and we will definitely help you work through that. Do you have any questions or if we haven't gotten to your questions, if you'd like to re-up it in the chat, um, just because we got a quite a wave. So I don't know if we missed anything. I think Kelly kind of answered this, but there's a question on, can a program qualify if it primarily serves 3K students and parents with additional services targeting parents with zero to three? So our focus is on caregivers and parents with children zero to three, but if you're serving kind of 3K and then want to expand services to serve that zero to three population, then that would um, be perfectly fine and we'd encourage an application. Rex answered the question about fuel. Thank you. Yeah, fund for early learning. That's what it is. Um, Alicia, does your nonprofit have to be a certain amount of years open? No, um, no, no preference on sort of how long you've been operating. We're open to brand new 501c3s and 501c3s have been around for decades. Um, all are welcome to apply. Jeanette, uh, you are a non-for-profit food pantry, but you also run a for-profit daycare. Um, the 501c3 entity would be eligible to apply, the for-profit entity would not. So it just depends um, how you're, who you're putting as the primary applicant there. I see a question that says, can you give us some tips on creating a strong application? So um, as a general, given we are expecting and hoping to see uh, a variety of applications and programs uh, and locations, 
Uh, my biggest tip would really be to lean on that selection criteria, which we will set out um, and, and use that as your rubric for how you would do it. My second tip is that you please can sign up for office hours and we'd be happy to talk to you specifically about your program and what you are thinking if, if you'd like to talk to one of us um, from our team directly. Thanks, Kelly. So it looks like we have gotten to most questions. If we haven't answered your question, please, please, please send it over to hello at feelfor50.org. I want to be respectful of people's time today, so I'm going to go ahead and close the Q&A session. Thank you all so much for taking the time to join this call today. Please stay tuned for more emails from Robinhood in the coming weeks leading up to the application deadline of November 19th. Again, just an email away. Do not hesitate to reach out to us at hello at feelfor50.org. Thanks again, and have a great afternoon, everyone.